You're going to want to grab yourself some heavier weight fabric. I recommend twill or duck canvas. And you'll want to grab about a half a yard. You'll want to grab two zippers. And I recommend getting zippers that are 20 inches or more because you're going to be trimming the ends off in the end. You'd rather have it be longer than too short. You'll need about three yards of one and a half inch webbing. You'll need two one and a half inch buckles and two strap adjusters. And these typically come in a set. And lastly, you need your pattern, and this pattern is available at properfitclothing.com, and the link will be in the description. Super easy to use, all you have to do is download it and print it off. And like always, all these supplies will be linked in the description below. Getting started, go ahead and trace and cut out your pattern. Then go ahead and grab one of your zipper panels and your zipper and line it up kind of in the middle, pin it on with right sides together, and go ahead and do a straight stitch all the way across. And as you can see, the zipper we're using is way too big, but that's totally fine because we're gonna be trimming the ends off in the end. Then go ahead and grab the other zipper panel and do the same exact thing and make sure that it's lined up exactly with the first zipper panel. What you're gonna do now is go ahead and add a top stitch to both of those sides. So just roll that seam over and stitch right on top. and go ahead and do this for both sides. Next, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab your side panel and place right sides together right on the edge of those zipper panels. I recommend pinning it on so that way it stays square and go ahead and stitch across that zipper. And before you stitch the other side on, make sure you move that zipper train down into the zipper panel so that way the zipper doesn't get caught on the outside. And then once you have that pinned on, go ahead and stitch across. Now you can go ahead and trim those zipper ends off. So we're gonna be using a double fold bias tape binder to clean up those edges. And you can definitely get these for domestic sewing machines too. We're gonna to have links in the description. So go ahead and cut out long pieces of bias tape that are the right measurements to the width of your binder. The other option is to use a bias tape making kit, and this is where you pretty much just make your own bias tape. And it comes with a presser foot that helps you attach the bias tape to your garment. And it's pretty simple to use. All you have to do is cut a strip, feed it through, and iron it. And after that, it works the same as the bias tape. You just fold it over and sew it on, or you use that attachment. And what we're going to be doing is covering these inside edges to clean them up and make sure that they don't fray. So go ahead and take your double fold bias tape and go across those edges. With those edges bias taped, now we're going to go ahead and roll that edge over and do a top stitch all the way across on both sides. Next, we're gonna go ahead and assemble the front panel. So go ahead and grab a zipper and the bottom of your front panel, place the right sides together like you did the zipper panels, pin it on and stitch it across. Just like the zipper panel, go ahead and do a top stitch all the way across. Grab the top portion of your front panel, Pin it on, make sure it's aligned up with the bottom panel, and go ahead and stitch across. Next, grab a back panel for reference, and what we're gonna do is roll that top panel over far enough so that way it lines up exactly with the back panel. Go ahead and pin that into position and make sure it's completely lined up with the back panel. And what you're going to do is stitch across it on top, right on the top of that zipper, making a top stitch all the way across. Very 
just like with the side panels, go ahead and move that zipper down into the front panel area so that way when you stitch it, the zipper doesn't get caught on the outside. And what you're gonna wanna do is just stitch the edges right on that edge so that way it locks down that flap. And go ahead and do this for both sides. Now you're gonna grab one of the two back panels that you cut out and we're gonna place it on the back of this front panel so that way there's a pocket division. And what you're gonna do is pin it on and sew right on that edge all the way around. Next, go ahead and grab your other back panel in three pieces of three inch webbing and you're gonna to wanna to feed them through your buckles and sew them directly onto both sides and then one buckle on top left corner, about one and a half to two inches from the edge. And you only need buckles on the top and one side and then the opposite of the side of the buckle, go ahead and put a bag adjuster. And again, the side straps go directly in the center of that side, so go ahead and pin that on and sew just on that edge. And this is just pretty much keeping them into position for when you add this panel onto the bag. Now go ahead and mark the middle of your front panel both on top and bottom and then also do the same thing for your side panels. Go ahead and line those up and what you're going to do is pin all the way around that edge. And as you can see this fabric is fraying very heavily, it's loose knit, that's why I recommend using canvas or twill. Now that you have it pinned on, go ahead and sew all the way around the outside. It takes a little bit of time, go slow and just work with the fabric all the way around. And now that you have those two panels sewn together, you can go ahead and trim those zippers off. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the back panel. Mark the centers and go ahead and pin that on all the way around. And just like before, take your time, sew all the way around that outside edge. Flip the right side out and make sure you have all those edges sewn in. Grab your two back strap panels and then also three 26 inch pieces of webbing. And you're gonna be doing this inside out and also it's every other flat surface there's gonna be a webbing. So go ahead and do your first one. This is gonna be the easiest one. Sew it on and flip it out and it's you're gonna kinda of start to see what it's gonna look like. Take your second piece of webbing, go ahead and place it one flat spot away from the first piece of webbing and sew that on as well. And since there's not a lot of room to work with, you're gonna have to go ahead and pull both of those webbing strips out that hole and then feed your last piece of webbing in through the same hole and with the right sides together, go ahead and stitch that on. And then once you have it stitched on, you can go ahead and pull the right sides all out. And as you can see, you still have three open ends. All you have to do is roll those edges over on top of one another and stitch all the way around doing a top stitch. Now you can take that back harness and feed it through your buckles. And to finish off the edges of your webbing, go ahead and roll it over twice and stitch across the top. And go ahead and repeat this for the other two webbing straps. And to finish up the edges on the inside to make them cleaner and stronger, go ahead and add bias tape all the way around both of those edges on the inside. And starting off, before you jump into a loose weight fabric like this, I recommend using canvas or twill. It's gonna be a lot less fray and easier to work with. But there you have it, your front bag is complete. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think, and we'll see you next time.